interested in breeding some guppies, are you? Or having some difficulties with the ones you already have? Well, you've come to the right place, Shunny. You've come to the right place. <laughs> So the first step is identifying males and females because most animals take at least one male and one female to reproduce. A little tip if you didn't already know that. Uh, from, for the females, you're going to see their anal fin will be triangular shaped. And that'll be the key thing that uh, makes you aware of a female. Uh, another thing with most guppies is the females aren't going to be quite as flashy or fancy. Um, they're going to lack color, a lot of them gray bodied or gold bodied and very simple tail coloration if any. Now there are special guppy strains that people have worked really hard on to make the females look better. So sometimes that will be a little difficult to tell. So once again you can always go back to that anal fin which will always show you that triangular shape. All right, on this side I have my males, and you can already see that they display more color in their finnage as well as their body. Uh, where their anal fin is, they have what's called a gonopodium. Pretty much their pee, pee if you want to get specific, you know. And once again, that's going to be the best way to determine their sex. In this case, is that gonopodium. Okay, so now you have your male and female at home, and you will have them introduced together. There's going to be a few additional things that you want to do to make sure the breeding process goes properly. Uh, some fish can be more difficult. Luckily for us, the guppies are probably one of the most simple fish to breed. Uh, and I just want to warn you, with great power it comes great responsibility. Because once you get these things going, sometimes it's hard to get them to stop. Uh, so, you're going to want to make sure you have decent water quality. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't want it too dirty. Uh, even though guppies are pretty hardy fish and they could uh, survive high nitrate levels and such, let's try to do something good for the fish. Let's not torture them just so they can become uh, uh, baby factories, if you will. Um, you'll want to feed them pretty frequently as well, as uh, a good amount of food will encourage breeding. Uh, I usually feed mine two to three times a day. Um, let's see, anything else I can think of? check in with these two later and that's pretty much all there is to it there's really not that much to breeding guppies it's it's one of those things that typically if you're having trouble is usually because you got a new tank and it's probably not properly cycled yet or maybe you have a sterile male or female that, that can't uh, produce eggs I can say eggs that they, they can't carry babies because they're live bearers right then they don't have eggs they actually birth live fish so so having a few extra fish can be key just to make sure you don't have that issue even if one male isn't producing the other male may be able to do that uh, when we're talking about quantities of guppies though we also want to make sure that they're not constantly harassing the females so if you have two males and one female that can be an issue because both those males will aggressively attack the female. When I say attack, I mean try to reproduce with the female and it could stress the female out and she could eventually end up dying. So you don't want to do that. I typically say one male per two females. That way they, he splits his time between the two. Now let's talk about increasing the survival rate of fry. Uh, once your guppy is ready to give birth, she's going to want adequate hiding spaces so that she's not bothered by the other guppies. Uh, things like java moss, uh, anubias, live plants. Um, this piece of wood here helps. As you can see, it's got like a little cave under it. Um, I even have a, uh, where's it at? Uh, back there, you can barely see it, but there's like a SpongeBob house. And it's essentially another area where they can get away from any type of harassment. Uh, this will be helpful not only for the birth, but also once the fry are born. There's some fry right there. And you can see they're very small. When they're first born, they're even more small. And they seem almost out of sorts as to uh, where they are. They'll start swimming, but 
they don't really know where they're swimming. So if you don't have cover, the other fish will go in there and swoop in and immediately eat those fish. So the cover will help this fry survive through its first few weeks as well as provide cover during the birthing process. Now on the opposite end, let's say you're having too many fry and you don't know what to do, I start removing some of that cover, reduce some of your feedings, that will cause the guppies to be more hungry and they will snack on fry. Now they won't snack on fry typically that's a few weeks old, sorry it's hard to focus on that little guy, but the newborns they will definitely grab. Another method that might work for fry survival is using things such as this, which is a breeder net or a breeder box. There's types, of different types of versions out there. This is a box that you could just float within your fish tank. Uh, there's two ways you could use it. One, you could put the female in there when she's about ready to give birth. <laughs> and it'll keep the other guppies from harassing her or the fry chances are she still can eat some of her own fry so that's a possibility uh, it's also used when you want to go ahead and just net up fry as much as you can and put them in there to survive so that nothing can get to them uh, when I first got guppies and I had my first birth I was very excited so yeah I was scooping them up and putting them in these nets and they in these breeder boxes uh, because it was exciting you know um, it's okay to do it, but if you continue to do it, you'll probably get old. And you'll want to go through the, go the easiest method, which I think is going heavily planted, and just letting them stay in there and survive on their own. Now here is all my females again. And you can tell a female is pregnant by their gravid spot. There's that little black spot that goes behind the anal fin. Uh, you see it right there. Let's see if I can give you a good shot here. But yeah, that all all that dark area you see in the back there, those that means they're pregnant. They're already carrying uh, children or bearing children. When they're about ready to give birth, they'll actually get really big and boxed up. I actually don't have any currently that are about to give birth, but you can definitely tell it's pretty obvious when it's happening. Uh, and when that occurs, that's when you could choose whether to put it in a breeder box or try to protect it or whatever the case is that you want to do. So that pretty much covers it. Guppies are really simple. That's one of the reasons they're one of the most popular fish in the hobby. They're hardy, they're easy to breed, and you just have fun with them. So if you're still having trouble, feel free to leave any questions or comments below, and I'll try to help out as best I can. Uh, if not, I'll point you to other people that may have more experience than me. Either way, we'll try to get you on the right track and you'll be enjoying this hobby in no time. Now, before I go though, something you may not know about me. I'm also a little bit of a UFC fan. Actually, I like UFC a lot. And this weekend is the Mayweather-McGregor fight and I'm so excited. I actually think, uh, I think Mayweather's gonna win to be honest. But I want McGregor to win. Now, if McGregor wins, I might, I might have to, I might give you guys a little dance video or something. Breaking it down, you know, because that is the biggest upset in uh, sports history, probably. But uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend, and until next time, see ya!